MongoDB. Can anyone tell me what MongoDB is? A database. Database, okay. And how does it differ from the databases that we've been working with thus far? It's not unstructured. Unstructured. Good, yeah. So what do, what do we call this kind of database? It's a no SQL. Yeah, is what that's called, right? Non-relational database. Exactly. Okay, great. So what I've done is I've written up here on the on the wall some of the concepts that, that you guys are already familiar with. So with MySQL, each database is basically called a schema, right? So if I want to create a new database, that's a new schema. In Mon in terms of MongoDB, we would call those data. A table in MySQL will have a rough equivalent of a collection. Okay. In MySQL, we have records or rows. In MongoDB, these will be called documents. And then finally, um, in MySQL, we have these fields. Same thing in MongoDB. Okay. So we'll still have fields inside individual documents. Great. Has anyone installed Mongo yet? Nobody? You have one person? OK, cool. So um, just a word of warning. If you're on a Mac, uh, there's some information in the platform that I think is slightly outdated. So I would glance at the actual MongoDB docs page. So if you go to docs.mongodb.com, I would recommend also installing it with Homebrew. Where is installation? So if you go to this installation page, whoops, where's Mac? Oh, here it is. Oh, that's the enterprise version. All right. Well, so anyway, the, uh, the instructions they give you on the platform maybe slightly outdated so just I'll put I'll post something up on Mattermost because there's something that you need to do before you install it with Homebrew. Okay. Are we uh, using the latest version or Yeah, let's use let's use 4.2. I believe that's the current version right now. Okay. So if you have any issues with um, there's this date, this um, it, on Mac, there's going to be a data directory. And this may be on PC as well. So it'll be something like, let me just type it out. It'd be something like forward slash data slash DB. If you have any kind of an ownership issue with this directory, then just let me know and we'll see if we can get your, your uh, ownership fixed on that directory. Because it might be that when you, when you try to run MongoDB, you get some kind of a, a permissions error with that folder. Okay. One thing you could try to do if you are getting that permissions error is that you can run MongoDB using sudo. But there's also the fix where we can change the ownership of that directory. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> when you guys get Mongo installed, you can run it quite easily. So if I just open up a terminal down here, just type in Mongo. Okay? And once we're in the Mongo shell, we can use whatever database we want. So I can say, I have some different commands that I can run. I'm going to say show databases. Let me expand that a little bit. And it'll just give you a list of all the databases that you have. You can also do show DBs for short. So this does the exact same thing. Okay. Now, if I want to switch to one of these guys, so if I want to switch to my author's DB, I can just say use authors. And then you see switch to DB authors. Okay. If I want to see what collections are inside this particular database, I can say show collections. OK? 
Okay, so my, my database authors also has a collection of authors. Sometimes that can be confusing. All right, now here's an interesting thing about Mongo. I can actually switch to a database that doesn't currently exist. So I can say use non-existent DB. Okay, switch to non-existent DB. Isn't that kind of weird? Did we even create that thing? No, we haven't done anything. Like that. Okay, but if I show DBs, show DBs, is it there? It's not even there. Weird, huh? <laughs> okay, so it, so it really doesn't actually exist until we insert some data into some collection there. All right? But you can sort of willy-nilly switch around to these different databases even if they're not there yet. That's sort of the weird thing about it. All right, so I'm already using my non-existent DB. <clears throat> if I want to, some of the different things that we're going to be doing, obviously, is we're going to be inserting records we're going to be reading records. We're going to be updating and deleting, right? Those, those main sort of CRUD operations that we're familiar with. So let's try inserting something here. Let's say DB. And then the dot part is we're going to say the name of the collection that we want to insert into. So let's say I have a user's collection that I want to insert a user into. I'd say DB users. And then I could say insert. So notice that I'm going to invoke this like a function. And then inside that, I'm going to pass an object that has all of the, all of the fields and the values that I want that, this particular user to have. OK, so let's insert Anthony here. Anthony. Last name Mendoza. Okay, cool. So it's telling me that I inserted one one document. So again, we're in MongoDB land, so we call these documents. Now what I can do is if I go show DBs again, it actually appeared. So now that I've inserted something into that database, it is part of my my list of databases. OK, so how can I actually see all of my data for the users collection? I can say db.users.find, like this. And notice how I'm not passing anything into find, because I'm not looking for any one particular user. I just want to see all of them. And there we go. And you can see all, all the information that's inside Anthony's document here. So what's this object ID here, this underscore ID? So this is essentially the unique ID of this document. Okay. So this is what, what will allow us to, let's say we're trying to update some specific document, we can use that ID to get to, get to it. Just like how we would in MySQL, only in MySQL we were using integers, right? Okay, and if I want to see that a little bit nicer, I can also do, I can add on a call to pretty at the end of it. And that's pretty nice, right? Kind of lays things, <laughs> makes it nice and pretty. All right, so that's cool. So let's say I want to add my second user now. So db.users.insert. This time, I'm going to change things up. I'm just going to say first, I'm going to insert Michael here. Last, OK. OK, so we inserted Michael. Let's take a look at our data one more time. Wow, what's going on here? I've got first name, last name here, and I've got first, last here. Did Mongo care about that? Not one bit, right? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Mongo really does not care how, I mean, it basically has to be JSON. But beyond that, it's not really going to create any problems if we change up the names of the keys 
or if, or if I have a totally different, as you can see, a totally different set of key values here. Okay. So what else can we do? So that's the insert part, and we were reading, right? What if I want to find a specific document, say, by some characteristic? How would I do that? So again, I would say users, db.users, and then inside the find, instead of just passing nothing, we could actually pass an object that had some different requirements that we're looking for. So we could say find first, and then I'll set that equal to Michael. And then we'll do pretty again. That's a really good point. Yeah, so if we were looping through something and we expected them all to have the same format, that could definitely pose some problems, right? Okay, so tomorrow, yes, Anthony. Oh, sorry, where are you done? Well, I was just going to say tomorrow we're going to get into Mongoose, which will actually allow us to apply a more rigid structure to this, because as you can see, it's not really that structured. I was going to ask about the, the non existent database. Mm -hmm. That's the database and users is the collection? Correct. The table? Okay. Yep, exactly. So you guys can see here, <clears throat> I was just trying to find users that had a first of Michael, and of course, I pulled up Michael's record. Right. Um, I can also do, I should be able to do find one. Let me try that real quick. Oh, never mind. Is find one not not to uh, see some of these things I mix up because in Mongoose we're gonna have slightly different queries. They're gonna look pretty similar, but sometimes I think that I can do something in Mongo that actually is, is more of it's a Mongoose function. Alright, so that's how we can find given <clears throat> a certain condition there. I can just pass in an actual document with that condition. Alright. What else might we want to do? Oh, by the way, here's how to clear your Mongo terminal CLS. Okay. Is the ID hexadecimal? Can it all always have the same number of digits? I believe it is all always the same number of digits. I'm not positive about the hexadecimal part, though. Hash. Yeah, it is definitely a hash. Looks like it has different parts. Hey, look, there's a whole article about about the ID field and how to use it. <laughs> when you get the DB that users that insert that. Oh, look at this. Sorry, hang on one second. A four byte value representing the seconds since the Unix epoch epic. A three byte machine identifier, a two byte process ID, and a three byte counter starting at a random value. In summary, the ID's first nine bytes guarantees guarantee its uniqueness across ma machines and processes. Nice. Cool. Just something to know. All right, go ahead. <laughs> So I was just asking when you did the DB that users that insert, mm -hmm. that's when the table was created. Right. So that so that created the collection, so and it also created the database at the same time. Okay. If I was to, you know, misspell it, does it mean it be that user that find and I would create another table, and then there would be two tables, users and user. Uh no, if we did a DB dot, uh, sorry, let's see. We did db.user.find. There should be nothing in there, right? So we don't even have a user collection right now. So I presume this would just be empty. Yeah, it'd just be an empty set. Nothing's returned. How do you check all the tables? In the table? Oh, so yeah, we could do show collections. So see, the only, the only collection we still have is users, because we never inserted anything into user. Yeah. So if I misspelled it a bit? Insert user, then it will show on the 
collections to Yeah, the exactly. If you did show collections, now you'd have two of them, not two collections. All right. Cool. So what else might we want to do? We might want to update these individual documents, right? Okay, so let's do db.users.update1. And then the first document would be, what is the condition that I'm trying to find? So if I say first is Michael And then the second object should be, what changes do I want to make to this object? OK, so let's change first to new Michael. <laughs> oh, it must, must contain atomic operators. What? I've seen this error before, but I can't remember what, what's causing this. Have you have any of you guys run into this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we haven't. None of us have seen that error. Wrong syntax. Oh, okay, so we have we have to use this set operator. Okay. So that would be set this specific field to have this specific value. So let's try that. Okay, so if I go here, let's say set, and then inside that, put that guy, oops. Okay, so here we go. So we have a match count of one, and then a modified count of one. So we matched one document, and then we modified that same document. So again, if I do db.users.find.pretty, so there we go, new Michael. Cool. What else might we want to do? So we've got the create, the read, the update, let's delete. Yeah, we want to do that, right? So let's do db.users.delete1. Is it? We'll find out. <laughs> so first, new Michael. Deleted count. Deleted one. So again, if we go back and do our find, now we only have Anthony in our collection. Cool. So <clears throat> ultimately, what, what you guys are going to be doing as, as our projects or as we move along in the assignments is that we're going to introduce Mongoose tomorrow, which is going to allow us to apply a sort of more rigid structure. And then probably as you're running your assignments, you're going to have some different terminals open. Okay. So obviously, we, we've grown accustomed to having our main terminal open, which is running the server, right? You'll probably also have another terminal where you're just running a Mongo shell. So if you have questions about, hey, I thought the data looked like this or whatever, you can be in, in your Mongo shell and just run some queries to check and see what, what's wrong. Okay. What if we want to find a, uh, let's say we want to find a user by that user's object ID. How can we do that? Yeah, let's let's look at it. All right, so let's say db.users.find. Whoops. So we'd say id. Whoops. It should be underscore id. And then I believe we need to say object id and whatever the id is, right? So I'm just going to put in some random characters here. Let's see if we can get that going. Oh, it didn't even like the length of my ID. Okay, never mind. Let's do, um, let's just find all of them one more time. And I'll grab this ID right here. So let's do db.users.find, and then we'll say underscore ID, 
is going to be, oops, I'm just going to paste in this entire thing here. Okay, so when you're doing it inside the Mongo shell, you're actually going to pass in, uh, you're going to pass in object ID and then in parentheses the actual ID of the document that you're looking for. Okay, any questions about what we've done so far? It's all pretty pretty straightforward for you guys. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, what else do we need to talk about? I may just be able to dismiss you guys. I want to see if there's anything else I want to mention here. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I think we did all of this stuff. All right, so let's just talk a, talk a little bit about the pros and cons of the, the whole NoSQL thing. We talked about it before, but essentially what it means is that my data is a little bit less predictable. So if I go and grab all the records or all the documents in a specific collection and my structure is pretty all over the place, well, how am I going to iterate through that in some kind of a template, right? That could present some issues. So I may be looking for a particular key, but hey, it doesn't exist, or a specific field, it doesn't exist in this document. So that sucks. Okay. What other sorts of things can I put inside of a document? I can even put arrays, right? So let me get back to where I was here. So if we want to insert another user here, dot users, dot insert, and this time I'll insert Lance. Okay, and then we'll have a we'll have a field here that's just his interests, and this is just going to be an array. Okay, any particular interests you want to share, Lance? Coding. Coding. Running. Uh, okay, nice. All right. Hey, maybe I can get you in the Dojo Talent Show. <laughs> What's another thing that I'm thinking about? Yeah. It's coming up. All right. That's true. Yeah. You guys can kind of. Yeah, we can get the celebration going. Okay, cool. So that's good. So we've got some interest. We got coding, running, and guitar. Let's insert that guy here. No problem. db.users.find. Pretty. Okay. So we've got an array in here. That's kind of cool too. What if I wanted to add a some other item to his interests? How could we do that? Yeah, so let's let's do this. Let's say db.users.update1. And then again, the first argument that we're going to pass is just going to be the document that's going to help us locate this specific user. So we're going to say underscore ID. And then I'll pass that in, his ID. Now we can use this operator called push. So we want to push something into this array of interest, right? So let's say push. And then inside here, we'll say interests. What interest do we want to push? Maybe you like skiing? Sure. All right. <laughs> I've never skied in my life. Oh, really? You should try it. Sounds fun. All right, cool. So we closed out those guys there. Okay, so we modified Lance. Let's take a look at him. Cool. So we can just push something into his interest array. Pretty neat, right? Okay. You guys will notice that the a lot of the syntax here looks quite JavaScript y, right? The way that we actually invoke methods and so forth. All right. So uh, one one last thing I think we want to touch on is just how is this data stored in the database? 
and you might hear this term BSON. Has anyone heard of that before? Bison. <laughs> Bison. Bison. <laughs> JSON and, and Bison. Okay. So binary encoded format called BSON. So it extends the JSON model to provide additional data types, ordered fields, and to be efficient for encoding and decoding within different languages. All right, so that's kind of interesting, stored in BSON. Also, um, the question sometimes comes up about these IDs. Sometimes students ask, well, can I, can I create my own ID? Yes, you could. So if I wanted Lance to have some other ID in addition to this one that's being set. Let's just update them. So let me change this real quick. Instead of push, let's go back and use that set operator, which means we want to set some field to have a specific value. And I'll just say an ID of 1. Oh. What did I do wrong? Oh, yeah, I had an additional curl, you're right. So let me get to the end of that guy. Oh, my gosh, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was out of control. Let me try to get back in there real quick. Okay, so we need to use our non-existent DB. And then we'll go db.users.find. I'll say first is Lance. OK, and then we'll just say we want to set his ID to 1. Yes, I do. Now i got to remember not to press any other buttons to start that craziness that was going on. All right, update. One. Okay, so now if I go find pretty, oops. So there we go. He has an ID of one in addition to this underscore ID. Can you change the underscore? Yeah. Not recommended. There are there are ways that you can alter it in the documentation, but but really you don't have any reason to, right? Is, is a user going to care about these IDs? It means nothing to them. Anyway. So as long as it guarantees uniqueness in the collection, that's really all that matters, right? As far as we're concerned. Okay, cool. Any questions? Because I think we pretty much covered everything that you guys are going to have to do in the Mongo shell. Yes? Can Anthony. you set references here? Set references. How so? What do you mean? So like ID equals all of this would it make it easier to Find. No, like in Django, oh, I see what you're set. saying. Yeah. So, like, we would say user equals db.users.find, something yeah. like that. I don't know if I've even tried that. Um, so, first, Lance. Seems like. Okay, so if I say. Why did I call that users? <laughs> well, that didn't. <laughs> okay. It like, didn't seem to do anything. Like a dick. Can it do something with it? You want to actually like try to print this? Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> I must say. Good guess. So why did it only give us his first name, though? Oh, because you assigned it to only the first in the, in the first, like when you put users. users. Right. So I was hoping, though, that that would then assign users the to the entire, way. yeah, the, the entire document. So I don't know. That's pretty weird. Yeah, we probably should. So let's see. Assign 
variable mongodb shell. Variable is not set in mongo shell. You need to use var. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's cool. So let's try that then. So if we say var lance equals db.users.find first lance. OK, and then if I say print lance. That is lovely. Thank you. You guys just taught me something. <laughs> mm hmm Yes, quite similar. Cool. So you print out all your pretties. <laughs> My pretties? There's no ordinal. Like, why do they print out the things they don't talk about? Because it's because Anthony was was entered first, right? Is it ordered by the object ID? Yes, we actually don't have timestamps in here, but it looks like basically it's it's like an array. So if we add a new a new document, we're sort of pushing to the end of that array, right? So it's just giving us giving it back to us in the order in which they were entered. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much it. Let's have thumbs on this and you guys can get to work. Yeah. Ooh, it's my kind of day. Cool. Better than yesterday. Better than yesterday. Yeah. Sockets was a little rough. A little rough.